again i have this display for a couple of years i think two or maybe three years now and i made a video about it i think in the same time when i bought it but it seems that it's not working anymore i didn't use it past few years but now i have a project for it so i try to make it usable again with the uh, raspberry pi 3b plus which is the same version that i used in my my previous video but it seems it's not working and this is the note that it came with it has some simple in instructions there are just some command lines that you should use i'm not sure why my camera is so blurry but yeah these instructions uh these are not usable anymore it, it doesn't work because nowadays we so i think one year ago or two years ago there was that uh modification let's say the raspio os which was the let's say difference between bullseye and bookworm so this was meant to be used with bullseye but even so it, it, it doesn't work with this instruction anymore so we can get rid of it spend a couple of days trying to figure out and find a different way to, to make it work but I failed but luckily some guy on reddit had the same issue that I have and he shared another YouTube video that the same display work but using another driver so we are speaking now about the wave share driver which it seems it's compatible with this display also so first of all let's mount the, the display you have to align the pins and get you have to be sure that you don't miss any pin perfect ah, you see not like this okay now it's a light perfect okay let's see so firstly you'll need a micro sd card on which you will have to write an image i'm using raspberry pi imager for this here you can go to choose device i will choose raspberry p3 because this, this is a 3b plus then choose operating system as i said it has to be bullseye so this display doesn't work anymore with bookworm because it was designed to, to work with bullseye so we will choose this one but you can go with other if you want to choose i don't know maybe a bullseye with no desktop environment so maybe you want only the terminal in this case i want to show that this will work with touch screen also so i will go with the full desktop environment but also you can choose a custom image so if you want you can go in the archive uh, of the raspberry pi org and you can choose an older image if you want but i will go with this one legacy bullseye choose storage and choose one sd card that i have plugged in it's 32 gigabytes you can go as low as 8 gigabytes i think you you should be safe especially if you are using the light version without the desktop environment i'll click yes because i i customize the settings in order to have the um, wpa supplicant so i have the wi-fi credentials inside and also the ssh file created without to with, without the need to manually create them click yes and let's just wait this will take like two or three minutes but i will fast forward it
Okay, now it's done. One mention before we start is that this will work with Raspberry 3, 3B+, 4 and 4B. It might not work with Raspberry Pi 5, but it, it depends. Maybe the 5 or the Display 4 5 comes with different instructions. From now on, I will just buy some displays that are HDMI compatible because this is a lot of head edge. Okay, safely remove. And we can start. Now we have to place the SD card into the slot. And now we need some power. I'm using the original Raspberry Pi adapter, but you can use any five volts that are providing 3 amps. Perfect. So we got the display and this is all that it did. Just a white, a white light and that's it. We also have somehow some kind of pen that came into the kit and it's useful and not i mean this is not the greatest display that you can use so you will see the refresh rate it's not as i want it to be but hey it was cheap it was like 10 bucks three years ago so it's useful for all small projects okay so now it's fully booted i checked my uh, my router and so the IP so we can SSH into it my ID is pi192.168.1.104.2.1 and if you get this message that uh, the verification of the host key failed you'll have to delete your old key because that means another device maybe another raspberry pi connected before and it saved the the key certification in the ssh post so you have to go under users your username that ssh and known host edit it with notepad and delete that line but let's do that now. So C users, this is my user, SSH, known hosts, open with notepad. So as you can see, the last two lines are 114. I will just delete them save the file try to SSH again yes because we want to save the fingerprint and we could log in now let's do a sudo apt update to have the, the latest version of the modules and drivers nothing to update so now let's do a sudo apt upgrade and this will take three or four minutes. Press Y and I will fast forward the rest. Okay, now that everything is updated and upgraded, we will need Git and Git doesn't come pre-installed with all the versions. So let's do a sudo apt install git. It's already the newest version. Okay. Now we will need to clone the repository from Git, which is this one with the WaveShare driver. 
once this is cloned you will need three commands you need to cd into the lcd show folder that was just created ch mode to give it rights and then lcd 35 show which will activate this okay now that it's ready it will be restarted rebooted and we have to wait for two or three minutes the image will appear as soon as it will be rebooted but this is not yet over we still have to do a couple more adjustments so as you can see everything is showing now so just to say okay we have the display i'm not sure how much you can see but i just want to to show you that the touch screen works okay it works Let's open the terminal. Yeah, everything works. But let's go back and SSH again into it. So if you want to rotate it, for example, with 180 degrees to be so you can keep it like, I don't know, like this. You can go back to the LCD show folder and type this command which will activate 180 degrees rotation. Now let's calibrate it and in order to do this you have to install Xinput calibrator. So sudo apt get install. Okay, this is done. Now we can go here and the pi image i don't think it's visible yeah and you have to scroll down go to preferences and calibrate touch screen and now you have to press on the red signs Okay, that's it. Now it should be calibrated. Just one thing and we are ready. Let's go to CD boot and sudo nano config.txt to modify the config.txt file. You have to go a little down and here where you have uncomment overclock the ARM uncomment this one with the frequency then you have to input the overlay and this HDMI command and that's it control X yes and save and that's pretty much it now it's a fully working display with touch screen and everything I will switch to the light version, but I just wanted to show you that it's it's working with the touch screen also. And really quickly, if we are already here, let's mount the case. So let's shut it down. Shut down. It's not the, the coolest display, but hey, it works. So I don't need to throw it away. Okay, once it's fully shut down, you can see that the green light will disappear and now basically it's, it's shut down. You can remove the USB. Let's remove the display for one second. Align it. You know what? Remove the SD card first because it will be easier to align it. Be careful with the pins 
and now you have to get something sharp and press it in the same time okay okay perfect so you have one two pins here one two pins here we will have four screws let's align the display again perfect now the rest of the case You have if you have such a kit it will come with four rubber pads and they are very useful because it, it, it won't slide after that on the on the desk let's put the SD card back Be careful when you slide it in because you have a small gap and it happens to me a couple of times that I just push it and, and wait somewhere here and then you have to disassemble it all again, reassemble it. Okay, perfect. It's all the way in. Let's plug it again. And it started to boot. So now it's a small, quick, compact and portable device. And it can be used in multiple projects. Also the, the cursor works. The pointer, as you can see. You can select something if you want. It's not the best touch screen and in order to use the scroll you have to try and press it straight and not angled but you'll get used to it. As I said I, I don't need the, the touch screen so much I just need the terminal so I will switch to a light version but it's just for the just for this video purpose. Okay I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it will be useful for you. As I said, now in 2025 the old version doesn't work anymore, but if you have such a display around and you want to throw it away, think twice, watch this video and make it happen. Thank you for watching, please subscribe if you are not yet a subscriber and see you in the next one. Cheers!